today is Wednesday, March 20th, or so I'm told this morning. So today's a class, or speaker presentation, whatever. Today we've got our friend, Doug, also a member, doing 3D printing. And by the way, we are trying to raise money to buy a 3D printer of our own. Uh, we have 130 some dollars right now. We're aiming for 800 We should have it pretty soon. So if you'd like to donate some money to buy us one of these things, a cheaper model than that, actually. Uh, we also have some bracelets for sale, five bucks each. Really cool. So, uh, here you go, Doug. All right. All right. Um, my name is Doug Costell. Uh, I've been into 3D printing for, I'd say, about a year now. Uh, I really got into it about last year when MakerBot came out with a certain uh, replicator 3D printer. And from, since then, I bought this 3D printer, and I've been doing a lot of it over the last six months or so. So. I want to explain a little bit about myself so you just you know who I am and you understand where I'm coming from, I guess. Uh, I went to the University of Akron. I got a mechanical engineering degree and now I work for Bridgetown here, here in Akron. Um, some, of my, some of the things I like to work on when I was at Akron, I worked on a team that built Baja cars. It's, it's a car that looks like this. It's basically a doom buggy. We built, the, we built those cars for all five years while I was at Akron. This is actually the fourth car that I built. But yeah, we went out and raced those things and had a real, had a real great time doing that. Um, also in the past, some of my personal sort of maker projects have been the one up in the top right. That is, that is a CNC machine that I designed and built. Um, and then the bottom, the bottom right is, so I call it my bike or USB bike generator. But basically, there's a small motor that attaches to. Um, the wheel of your bicycle, and as you as you pedal your bicycle, it spins the motor, which generates power, and then that powers a little USB port that, like you, plug into your car. So from that, you can you can go ahead and generate some power, and you know, charge up your phone while you ride your bike. So that's a cool little project I've worked on in the past too. So I know a little bit about me. I wanted to explain a little bit of the history of 3D printing. So 3D printing was originally sort of invented and in, patented really in 1986 by Charles Hall. He, um, he invented this stereolithography <coughs> um, process that uses a photo curable resin to 3D print objects. Um, but he started 3D Systems. 3D Systems is the largest 3D printing company in the US or worldwide really. Um, so then in 1988, Scott Crump um, <coughs> invented used deposition modeling and FDM printing, which is what this printer is based on, and what a lot of printers are based on that are lower cost nowadays. But all of the low cost printers sort of came in about 20 years after the original invention of 3D printing in general. Um, when Adrian Boer from, uh, he started RepRap, he's actually a professor at Bath University in the UK, but he started the RepRap project, and from there that sort of built and gained momentum, and more people found out about it and eventually it became, you know, what 3, what 3D printing is today. I guess just by a show of hands, how many people have at least like seen 3D printing online or watched videos or seen articles? Has anybody seen a 3D printer besides this one here today in person? Okay, so we've got a little bit of crowd here. So the FDM process is, is um, FDM is what what um, Scott Crump, so he started Strace. The Strace is the second largest 3D printing company out there now. But FFF, or fused filament fabrication, is what rep rep companies call their process, just so it's different from FDM. But basically, what happens is a filament, um, so like what you see on here, on those tools <coughs> there, it's a filament of plastic, gets forced down through. Um, a set of two rollers. One is a drive gear, so you have some, this, this is actually driven by a motor and it spins and then forces the plastic down and the roller just presses the plastic against the drive gear. So as it is forced down into the hot end, um, that's what it's generally called in rep wrap terms, and the hot end has a heater embedded into it that heats the nozzle of the front of the hot end and then there's a small hole less than a millimeter size that the plastic is forced out to, forced out of, and basically what happens is that happens. The plastic's forced down through. It's heated, melts, goes to almost liquid state, and then is forced out onto the build platform. 
and you get you get a layer of plastic that's stuck to the build platform. <coughs> and as you keep moving, you can move you can move the nozzle then in X Y Z directions anywhere you want to, um, and it moves around. It basically draws one layer, and then it moves the nozzle up a little bit, so just a little bit, and then draws another layer on top of that to create the final 3D printed object. Um, these are the pictures up here on the top, top right, the sort of black looking picture. That's an extruder that, that's sort of what MakerBot sells as their extruder. Um, and then another popular extruder design is called a Wade extruder. Um, that's on the top, very top right. Um, this has got a giant gear on it to sort of give, it, give the motor extra torque to force the plastic down through the hot end as it's melted. So that's sort of the process of 3D printing and you know how, how this all works. It really is really is quite simple. It really is just a hot glue gun uh, that moves around really precisely. So there's not a really there's not magic to this really. It's you just gotta sort of figure out the mechanics of it. So the plastic that you can use for 3D printing, there's many different types of plastic that you can use in all different colors. Some of the most the most common plastic used right now for a more low cost 3D printer is ABS. So ABS, uh, they make Legos out of ABS plastic. There's a lot of products made out of ABS. Um, it's available in all kinds of colors. So you yeah, I got some colors up there. I've got some colors here that you can see as well. Um, but it's a, it's a very common plastic used in industry right now. PLA is another, is another plastic that's very commonly used in 3D printing. And it's a corn plastic, it's bio, it's a bio plastic. So it's somewhat biodegradable. It's derived from corn instead of oil. And you can also get that plastic in many different colors. Another plastic that's more recently become available is nylon. And you can purchase it online, but basically with nylon you get a much, you get a stronger part that's also flexible. Sometimes with the PLA, it can be, it's a strong part, all these parts up here are actually PLA, but it can be brittle. So nylon is going to be more flexible, you're going to be able to bend it, or you know, you could take a part and throw it at the wall and it's not going to crack into pieces um, with nylon. Um, then there's hips or high impact polystyrene. And that's a new, a new um, material that this company, Philico, that's actually just a local company. They're from Norton. And they're actually here tonight. I'm gonna, they're going to do a little intro a little bit later. But it's a, it's a, newer, it's a newer material that you can use to print with. Um, it's also been known to be soluble. Um, so it could be used as a, as a support material. And down at the bottom here, you can sort of see two different pictures. One, say you wanted to 3D print that cat essentially, but it's standing on its paws and there's a lot of under, a lot of open space underneath it. So you have to create a support structure underneath for that open space to be filled up. So you do that, but then you have to break that away sort of manually or with a with a, like a razor blade. But with a soluble material, you could just take this this part that has all this extra support material and just put it in a liquid or put it in water and that would just dissolve away and then you'd have your finished part and it'd be nice and ready to go. Um, next part, or the next um, material is polycarbonate. Polycarbonate is a clear plastic. It's, it's the type of plastic that they say, you know, is a clear plastic that's bulletproof. Um, when you get it in thick sheets, it can be bulletproof. It's used for a lot of different things. but. So that's definitely a strong plastic. Um, I haven't seen too much evidence of it being really used, though. You can only really buy it from one source. Um, PVA. PVA is water soluble, so it can be used as a support material. Um, but then you can just put that part in water, and the PVA will dissolve, and then you'll have your part. Uh, from what I've heard and read, the PVA is also sort of tough to deal with, tough to work with, because it's it, it absorbs water as well as dissolving in water, so it can be difficult to print. Then there's a filament called Laywood D3, but it's essentially a wood filament. So it's, it's a it's a polymer mixed with a lot of sawdust, essentially, that you can print out of your machine. You can print at different different temperatures, and this part over here is one of the one of the uh, wood printed parts. And when it's finished, you can sand it like wood, 
and you can, you can even stain it as if it's wood. Um, and when you print it at different temperatures, it gives a different, slightly different color. So you can sort of color it as, as wood is sort of naturally colored as well. So these are sort of all the, all the materials that you can, you can go out and buy right now um, as far as 3D printing goes. There's a lot of other things that you could potentially print with, but these are the type of filaments that you can go out and buy and use on these lower cost RepRap style printers. So 3D printers in general, there's been a lot of them in development since 2006 when the whole RepRap project sort of got started. This, this chart over here is sort of a family tree of RepRap and it started right here and then it sort of branched out into all these different printers and different processes as well. But my best estimate was there's at least 300 different designs for 3D printers out there right now. The best place is to go to sort of look at all of them and sort of compare. One is um, 3DERS.org and they have charts for both 3D printers themselves and filament, and it'll give you price charts as far as how much it costs, how much print, how much material you'll get, or some of the specs for the printer itself. So that's a great resource and website to go to. Um, there's Makezine, the 3D printer guide that came out a few months ago. I think we have a copy of it in the back. You can take a look at that as well. There's a lot of reviews for all the a lot of the bigger pr printers that are currently available. Then this RepRap family tree. If you just go to the RepRap wiki and look on that page, there's hundreds of different 3D printers with links to their websites from that page. Um, and some of the bigger companies right now, there are, there are MakerBot, they're in New York, MakerGear, they're right in Cleveland, um, PrinkerBot, SolidDuel, Finia, Ultimaker, all, those are some of the larger 3D printer manufacturers right now, companies that you can get, get a solid machine from. So cost of 3D printing. Essentially, costs range quite a bit, but it's cheaper than the professional machines by a whole lot. So you're looking at anywhere between $300 for a kit and maybe $3,000 is the upper range of a fully assembled machine. You can buy a fully assembled machine for as little as $500. Um, and for filament, you're looking at between $35 and $50 per kg, a kg of one, kil one kilogram or 2.2 pounds. This, this spool right here, I've used some of it, but this is essentially one kg of one kilogram of plastic. And you can print a lot, a lot with this, a lot more than you think, especially if you sort of use your plastic and conserve it you know, as you're printing. But there's a lot of objects you can get from this for $50 worth of plastic. So, some of the important things about 3D printing are what everybody is doing with it, what the applications are, and there's a lot of things that we like to print out. There's a lot of trinkets up here. You can do it for art. You can do prototype. You know, different ideas you might have for products, mold making, um, different functional assemblies that you can make. As well, there's endless possibilities, and people are coming up with new things every day. So I've got two examples here. This is a project, it's actually an instructable, but um, this guy, Evan, he 3D printed parts, like he's got the owl, which I also have over here, and he used the 3D printed part as a mold to do aluminum casting. So he was able to, you know, easily create that green 3D printed part and then, you know, use it as a mold to pour or mold aluminum in and create aluminum part that looks just like the 3D printed part. Then there's also a guy, his name's Cody. Um, he's from Texas, but he wants to essentially create a 3D printed gun. And there's all, so there's this wide breadth of you know, applications that you can look into um, or take into account when you have a 3D printer. So there's all kinds of things you can do. Some of the things that I, that I like to focus on are more functional assemblies, which I've got two examples up here. Um, Sort of as a functional assembly, I mean, you make 3D printed parts and then assemble them with other components into some full product or full device. So one thing I've got is this pet feeder that I made a while back. It's sitting right here. I can show you how it works afterwards. But basically what happens is you can load this pitcher up with cat food and it goes down to the bottom and then there's an auger screw inside the 
PVC pipe here that gets spun by a servo motor and it feeds the food out into a little dish to feed your pet. So you could hook up to a microcontroller and then put it on a timer and feed your pet whenever, and then you didn't have to feed your pet, it would just automatically happen. So I, I, to do this, I, you know, I created a 3D model of, the, of, the assemb of all the different parts and then I went ahead and printed them. The one that is half of the auger screw, just so in, in order to print the screw, I cut it in half printed both halves and then glued them together. And then we've got a picture of the, the dish, sort of shaped like a little cat head. And then I, for this project too, I also used my CNC router to cut the wood parts that are holding the bottom part of the feeder. So this was, this was sort of my first big project. Uh, I did a lot of things that you couldn't do any other way. Made a lot of parts with, that, are, that were shaped in ways that I couldn't just fabricate with like you know, a Dremel and a drill press or, uh, you know, an angle grinder. It, did, it would have been really hard to make. But with a 3D printer, I was able to just design them and put the button and it would be done. So, this is a real good project for me to get started. Um, one of the next big projects I worked on was my friend, his name's Brett, but he wanted to build a blender that would attach to your bicycle. <laughs> so, what this is, is it's a, inside this whole housing here, there's two, there's two gears that sort of look like this here. And this gear actually, this shaft right here, gets pressed against the tire of your bike. And as that spins, it meshes with another gear that's at a right angle. So it's going up and down. And that's connected to the, to the knife blades that are inside the blender. So as you ride your bike, it spins the knife blades and you can blend things on while you're riding your bike. Um, so we, so Brett actually, he designed up all these, these are some of the parts here, the part models here, and then we went and I went ahead and printed them all on my printer and put it all together. Um, it does work. He's, we've got some kinks to work out of it, but this is the first prototype 3D printing that you can just change and change the design as you need and print a new part. It's pretty, pretty inexpensive to do that too. So here's one of those parts that I printed. It was a pretty big part. Um, Comparatively speaking, this machine right here is actually, when you look at all the, all the possible 3D printers you could get for on, at a cheaper level, this is one of the bigger ones as far as print volume goes. So this is a definitely a big part, but this was the biggest, the two halves of that case. Um, this print took 24 hours straight printing without stopping and used over half a pound of filament, so that part 